Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So I welcome you all in this video. I hope all of you are in good shape. All of you are healthy and preparing really hard as well as motivated because motivation is really really important for you to move ahead. So let's begin this video, guys. This is the timetable for RBI Sabi Nabards live classes. And if you are looking for any course to get yourself enrolled, then I would suggest you to give a try to these courses. Any of these which you are looking for, of course, because these courses give you the benefit of doubt classes. And also, we conduct a special doubt class during the course of a week so that we can take the questions of yours and resolve your queries there. So do try it out, and if you want the demo classes of these live courses, so they are also available on our channel. This is the mobile application of ours. I hope all of you know about it. And before moving into the questions, um, uh, let me tell you that this is the phone number uh, on which you can call us for guidance if you need any kind of guidance or any kind of strategy, or if you need to just discuss. your preparation with us so this is the number on which you can call us this is the mail id you can write to us and this is the website of ours you can search more about us before enrolling in the course and this is my humble suggestion to all of you do search out before uh, enrolling in anyone's course and also check the teacher student connection if you are able to connect with us then only purchase the course otherwise don't waste your money because teacher student connection is the utmost important thing when you have to understand the concept okay so do pay attention to this if you are able to connect with me anuj sir or any other mentor on our platform only then purchase the course okay now let's discuss the first question because we have done a lot of discussion in the beginning itself now it's the time to talk about something meaningful So the first question is which of the following cities is known as the cultural capital of Kerala? So here, Thrissur is the right answer because Thrissur has been uh, is called as the cultural capital of Kerala. And why specifically I have asked you the cultural capital of Kerala is very interesting. Now I have also told you this fact that do not try to mug up such facts as of now because current affairs of six months prior to the examination are important, and you have approximately one year. For your NABARD, seven to eight months for SEBI and for RBI, approximately this much time you have for your these examinations. So right now your focus should be to develop the conceptual understanding of the news. So Thrissur, along with Nilampur and Varangal, these three cities have been added into the UNESCO's list of learning cities, and this is the news as of now. And obviously these are the first. cities of india which have got an entry into unesco's list of learning cities so this again becomes a static fact also because these are the first first cities of india okay so nilampur is the eco tourism destination thrissur is the cultural capital and borangal is the historic city of telangana now before telling you anything else let me show you the beauty of these cities nilampur can't you see that this city deserves to be the eco tourism capital of kerala next is thrissur so what you can expect uh, or i should say what you can derive from these pictures these are the cultural pigments uh, which are showcased in these pictures so this this is thrissur and guys this is varangal so very aptly these cities have been chosen by unesco to feature into the list Now, what is this list exactly which we are talking about? So, this is the global network of learning cities. Now, through this network, all the cities which have been put into this list, they teach the other cities. That is the basic idea. Learning cities. So, focus is on learning. So, it is an international policy-oriented network that paves way for the development and progress of other cities by sharing ideas and innovations at the global platform, and that platform is provided by UNESCO. through this list okay the cities included in the list can benefit greatly from the exchange of ideas and solutions for the benefit of the other cities and 77 cities are present in the list from the 44 countries no need to remember this data because this would change in the future okay definitely we are going to have more cities into the list but this is also a static fact guys because these are the first cities from india to enter into the 
uh, UNESCO's list. Next question is, recently a new initiative named WEST has been launched by the Indian Science Technology and Engineering Facilities MAP initiative to provide a separate platform to scientifically inclined women researchers, scientists and technologists for pursuing research in basic or applied sciences in frontier areas of science and engineering. What does E stand for in the full form of WEST? So here guys, E stands for engineering. Option B is the right answer. So West is women in engineering, science and technology, a very easy full form to remember. Now this is a part of your government initiative or government scheme, what, uh, whatever you want to say. So it is a government initiative. Definitely it becomes a part of your static GK. You can expect a question from this news even if in your RBI examination of next year or your NABAD examination of next year. Okay, so try to make notes of these uh, news which are of static nature or which belong to the government scheme sector. Okay, so this initiative has been launched under the Indian Science Technology and Engineering Facilities MAP initiative. So this is one platform and on this platform this new feature has been launched. So what is the basic idea? West aims to provide a separate platform to scientifically inclined women researchers for pursuing research in basic or applied sciences in the field of science and engineering. So it is basically an altogether separate platform for the women researchers. That is the basic idea of this West initiative and it is a part of this iSTEM initiative. Okay. Apart from this, one more initiative was launched and that is named as Connect quickly now this is guys uh, this is a platform that would help the researchers and the government to connect through the whatsapp and telegram platform for online discussion and immediate support so connect quickly what does it mean you can discuss quickly through a digital platform that is the basic idea now let's have a look at this iSTEM as well because it is a government initiative. So what does iSTEM stand for? It stands for uh, Indian Science Technology and Engineering Facilities Map. So here you have been given the entire uh, information uh, regarding iSTEM. I'm going to read two to three statements so that I can tell you the basic idea behind this iSTEM initiative. So it aims to work towards a more comprehensive listing of R&D facilities. Obviously, it is the facilities map. Do pay attention to this word. It is a map of the facilities in the field of science, technology and engineering. So this would be the first feature. So R&D facilities across India are the information of those facilities uh, is provided on this platform. Partial, providing partial assistance to tier 2 and tier 3 institutions for maintenance of facilities shared through iSTEM through comprehensive AMC program. Okay, so basically, through the by using the information given on the iSTEM platform, the government provides the financial assistance to the tier 2 and tier 3 cities so that they can develop their facilities. Next is the partial assistance is given to the users from the tier 2 and tier 3 institutions who use the facilities through the iSTEM. Then it promotes the indigenous development, especially by startups uh, of scientific equipment, value added technical supplies, including software, etc, etc. So all such informations are provided on this iSTEM portal. You can read all these things on your own as well. There is nothing much to this initiative. Okay. So guys, we have discussed the new initiative. And we also are aware of this fact that women, the women's participation in STEM field, STEM is your science, technology, engineering, mathematics and management because we have now an extended STEM. Okay, so this STEM is for management, but this STEM is related to the scientific field. So in order to increase the participation of women in the scientific field, science, technology, engineering and your uh, mathematics, the Department of Science and Technology has launched various schemes at various levels. So at the school level, we have the Vigyan Jyoti scheme, which aims to encourage the girls uh, to take interest in science and build their career in science uh, field. 
and the this initiative is operational in 50 Jawaharlal Nehru Vidyalayas. Next scheme is Vice Kiran. So this Vice Kiran is women in science and engineering knowledge in, involvement in research advancement through nurturing. This is an umbrella scheme for the women specific program. Uh, this basically this Vice Kiran scheme is an umbrella scheme which includes all the other kind of schemes which have been launched by the Department of Science and Technology for promoting or encourage, encouraging women to participate in the STEM fields. Okay. So here to ensure the particip uh, participation of women in the science and technology, especially those having a break in career. So this scheme aims to encourage those women who have a break in the career to come back to the field. So basically how does it do that? It creates the state of the art infrastructure in the women's colleges. So this scheme primarily works at the college level. The Vidya Jyoti scheme works at the school level. Now we have one more scheme that works at the uh, research level. Okay, so PhD scholars are, are eligible under this SERP power scheme. So this basically is a fellowship and research grant scheme for the female students, female scholars particularly, who have either attained their PhD or who have cleared their graduation or post-graduation. So that is the criteria and who are already working or engaged in any kind of project, they are given the research grant or fellowship. So these are the schemes at various levels that aim to encourage the children, the girl child to participate in the STEM fields. Okay. I hope you have found this information interesting. The next question is recently Ministry of Cooperation has constituted a committee under the chairmanship of former Union Cabinet Minister Suresh Prabhakar Prabhu for drafting the national cooperation policy document. What is the total strength of the uh, panel? So here 47 is the right answer. So clearly it is very easy. A committee has been formed for the national cooperation policy document. And again, it's a static fact because committees get never get old and they are never new. Understand this point. What does, what do I mean to say here is that this committee can be asked in your examination, even, even this can be asked in your phase two of NABAD as well. But if you are not a NABAD aspirant right now uh, for this year, definitely this question you can encounter in your next year's examination because committees have been asked in the examination and they are asked even before the six months of your uh, preparation, okay, six months of your current affairs that we tell you to prepare. So older committees are also asked, basically the idea is that. The existing national policy on the cooperatives came into effect in 2002. So it is really an old policy, it needs revamping. And at present we have 8.5 lakh cooperative societies with a member base of 29 crores. Again, a dynamic fact which is subjected to change. So don't remember, remember this fact. Now we are talking about the cooperative so societies. So let's have a look at the types of cooperative societies. Now understand this point that these are the societies, not uh, basically these are the cooperative societies and we have cooperative banks as well. Now the cooperative banks are altogether different and co uh, cooperative societies are different. So the cooperative societies are consumer cooperative society, pr producer, marketing, farmers, credit and housing society and the basic idea or purpose of these societies is hidden in their names only okay so i don't think that i need any kind of explanation here I need to give any kind of explanation here it is very explanatory from the name itself the next question is which state has launched the community harnessing and harvesting rainwater artificially from terrace to aquifer scheme and this is abbreviated as Chata. Chata is the name of the scheme. So which state has launched this scheme? Chata, Odisha. Now before going into the details, I'm asking you one question. Tell me when was the national mission on aquifers launched? This is your one and only question of the day. Do mention it in the comment section. So the total budget of this scheme is 270 crores. The basic purpose of this scheme is to basically revive the aquifers, the groundwater. Okay? 
so how are they going to do that they are going to use the uh, they are going to revive the depleting groundwater table and a target has been set to harvest 373.52 crore liters of water in 5 years okay and uh, again another target of the government is to spend 51.75 crores in 2022 to 23 and 54.56 crores each in the remaining 4 years till 26 to 27 okay the next question is which company will establish india's first geothermal power project so it is uh okay not the which company here which state or ut would be the right question so it is ladakh so ladakh is going to have this first ever geothermal power project and it is going to be developed by ongc so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the video and if you have any kind of suggestions anything to discuss with me you can put it out in the comment section below Thank you so much stay healthy prepare hard